All right, so this project that we're working on with Word on Fire Institute and University of St. Thomas is so incredible. I'm really excited about that, and I'm psyched that you guys are here with us. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm excited to be here. It's fun to talk about the new evangelization and about how the church and how we as Catholics can engage the culture and what sorts of ways we can use social media to spread the gospel. So it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, we have to meet people where they're at and this is where people are online, on Twitch, on YouTube, on social media. And I love that UST is embracing that and, and running with it. It's great. Well, you know, it's part of our university mission to empower the world with God's love. And so we do that with the truth. We do that with the energy that comes from creatives like you guys. And we really want to build those platforms and sort of a network of apostolates to do that. Yeah, I think it's interesting the combination of innovation and tradition, you know, the, the truth and the new landscape of social media and how do we begin engaging that in a way that's positive and um, helpful and just sharing the gospel when there's so much going on. It's so loud already. So how do we do it well? I think it's just a very interesting conversation. Because there. there are lots of people who are like, oh, that's the devil's work, right? We don't want that. But that's where people are. And if you abandon a whole world, even if it's a, a multiverse, right, to a godlessness, then we aren't living out the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's because video games is not my thing, it's sometimes hard for me to dive into all of that with my kids because I'm like, this isn't my thing. Why don't right. you be interested in the things I'm interested in? But it's also this act of love to dive in and engage with them, right. even if it does bore me to tears sometimes. Like, that's how we're connecting. <laughs> Well, and, you know, the, the point is it may not be your thing, but your kids are your thing, right? And so that's the medium where you meet them in their world. And so that provides you that bridge into their lives in a, in a way that resonates with what they see their most fun activity perhaps is. Yeah, the cool thing is that you said, it's, I like that you're trying to learn and, and love what they love. And what's interesting and surprised me was that the number of people who are parents who actually do love games and play. Like I was looking up all the stats, it always shocks me that like the average age of someone that plays games is in their 30s. <laughs> it's crazy. And so some parents like use it as their way to bond. Like they'll play yeah. with their kids and, and keep an eye on. So if you're not either doing that or at least trying to learn about it, then it's this whole universe that yeah. like, can be kind or of that, a scary place. Yeah, it seems scary. My husband got into Fortnite so he could play with our son. Mm -hmm. And so they would have something that they're connected with together and he'll know kind of the landscape, what's going on, how safe it is and all those things, yeah. which is kind of a labor of love sometimes, but also like they do have a good time together. Yeah. So I'll be playing with your husband and your son sometimes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. That, sounds great. that was my mission that I was sent on. Uh -huh. To, to meet when I was, my son found out I was going to meet you was <laughs> you've got to figure out how I can play Fortnite with Jonathan Blevins. Cool. So now mission accomplished. Consider it done. <laughs> All set. Well, you know, the other thing that, that I find so interesting, and, and our son is older, right? He's close to that demographic you're talking about. And, and that is, even though I don't play the games, I am participated with him sort of in listening to and understanding how he forms community through the guys that he's playing with, right? So it's, you're participating in his social activities in a way that's not direct, but it still connects us. And that's part of what family is about, is that connection with one another. And whether it's through video games or a more traditional way of doing that, it is about the relationship of the human person with one another and in a family that's so important. Yeah, that, part, that was really surprising to me, the community aspect of it. Uh, do you find that on Instagram, like the people that comment the most and that you end up falling back ends up being this community as well? Absolutely. Um, it's interesting to see, like, thinking about that, I can think of so many handles of people that's like, oh, yeah, I know so-and-so. Yeah. Because um, we've talked so many times in the comments or in messages or I've started following them and kind of seen a little bit about their life. And I think it's interesting, especially when those interactions become 
in-person interactions. Like we knew each other on Twitter until today, yeah. and now we know each other in person, but we already mm -hmm. had some kind of friendship. And so I think that that's also a beautiful goal kind of moving from this online space yeah. into a real mm -hmm. space, because then it's taking these relationships into like a deeper, more authentic friendship. Yeah. Not that online relationships can't be authentic, but they're not really the same level as these in-person mm -hmm. relationships. So I think that's another, instead of being down on online friendship, thinking yeah. how can we move even further into an in-person space from this online relationship. I love that. Yeah, I, I just think that it's cool. You know, the, the interesting thing for me is to see how all of this continues to evolve, right? And the personal things I think are happening now at a, at a more rapid pace since the pandemic is starting to yeah. subside a little bit more. I think people got really comfortable with the digital relationships in some ways. But now we have the opportunity to take that step into the reality of each other's presence and that's what's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's really exciting. It's been interesting seeing like friendships I've developed over the past couple of years and like message chats with like a few people. You get to know them really well and then everybody trying to meet in person even though we live in different places, you know, traveling to see friends that have become really important to us mm -hmm. when we felt isolated and now kind of moving into a new era is exciting. Yeah, one of the weird things for me about it is I love meeting people from the community online. Um, and my wife and I used to do these hospitality nights where we'd open our doors and the people from, from the stream would find out that we would just have you know, a meal and some beverages and hang out. I'm like, can I come? We're like, yeah. So we started opening our house to meet these people in real life. And now I do this annual March Madness party and I was telling you a little bit about it earlier, and it's like it's all these people are traveling from all over to come to this party <laughs> for the stream, but we'll get to connect in person and have that that relationship wow. become even more real, which is yeah, super yeah. exciting and really cool and weird, and it's still new and weird, awesome. and beautiful. There are ways to make both on like a, a parish level and um, just Catholic lay people who are connecting. I think there is there there are ways to get connected online in a more, I don't necessarily want to use the word superficial because I feel like that makes it seem not unimportant, but not as deep as in, in person. So making those connections and then moving them forward, I think parishes can have social media accounts that are reminding people of events and trying to get people in the door, get people together in person because they're already hanging out on this online space. And so I, I always cringe thinking about like advertising for the church because I think of that as negative. But when I think about what I see, say on Instagram, oh yeah, this restaurant is opening up. I want to go. You know, it's it's right there in mm -hmm. this online space where I'm present. And if parishes are doing that, then I think it's just one more connection to get people in the door, get them really connected in person. And then I think as lay people, you know, these connections that we make online if we're taking a step further and like like I love the story about just having this hospitality inviting people over we've done um, our friend Harrison Lemke on Twitter we do an advent concert every year at our house and he comes and he plays music and people from Catholic Twitter you know just yeah. friends on Twitter show up at our house that we've never met in person before and become real friends and so I think it's both on a parish level it could be used better, social media could be used better, but also we could be more intentional as Catholic lay people in getting kind of to the next level of real friendship and community. Yeah, it feels like the Catholic Church is always a few years behind a lot of others when it comes to innovative things, and part of that is just being safe and, uh, and making sure they're doing it the right way. But yeah, the church has to be present online and in these places, and I can't wait to see the different ways, like you bring up parishes, that parishes can start networking, right? And to have this great community online that is real, and, and there's fruits there and there's joy there. And then, okay, where can they go to have that in-person experience? And if different parishes are linking mm -hmm. up and saying, hey, we do have stuff for young adults here at our parish and they can go over there. I think that's gonna be huge to see like how the church utilizes the online space for evangelization and for community. And you see that even in the examples that you two have given, your hospitality, March Madness or whatever, and you with the, the concert. So, those are the things that blend the worlds, right? So you have this digital world where the relationships might be different, and then you have the personal world. And so I, I would guess everybody has had that moment where they're like, now where did I hear that? Where did I, was it, did we talk to them in person? Was it on the phone? Was it a, a Zoom? Did we text? 
you know, you don't remember how it all flows together, but it's like your calm stream, your communication stream, it all happens at once. And so that's where I think the church has that real opportunity through all of these channels working together. And so they blend together in a way that may not even matter what the channel was. It's just that constant reinforcement of relationship and how we reach each other. And we'll find new ways to do that. I mean, with each new person that comes on board, with every new platform that is developed, we have a way to reach people that maybe haven't heard the good news before, but for each person it rings true and new each time, and that's what's so incredibly exciting about it. Yeah, it's amazing the, the work, that people are coming from all walks of life all over on, on your Instagram and other social media and on Twitch, and, and y'all are living that out here on campus as well, so it's not just this facade. Everyone is being their authentic selves who God made them to be, and for some reason, that's attractive to people. <laughs> pointing them to Jesus, then mission accomplished. Amen. Yeah, I think there's um, the idea that social media can't be authentic. You use the word authenticity. Mm -hmm. and um, But I think that can be true. Social media doesn't have to be authentic, but it should be authentic. And so that's an interesting concept, too, of how do we share ourselves authentically and honestly while balancing out privacy and you know, obviously we get your everything all the time that's not healthy so how do we share in a way that's honest and authentic so that we're not just being um, disingenuous advertisers for Catholicism but we're really sharing what what God has called us to offer in a way that's honest and authentic that genuine quality is timeless right and people can see right through it if you're not authentic so I think that's why we just live out our lives uh, in a faithful way, right? But it's not proselytizing so much as it is just sharing the joy that we feel from a God that loves us so much.